Here we're looking at an example of a binomial probability distribution. And there are four um, conditions that have to be satisfied for a binomial experiment. And those conditions are, the, well, the first one is that there are a fixed number of trials. The second one is that for each trial, there are two possible outcomes, a success or a failure. The third one is that the probability of a success is the same for every trial. And the last one is that the random variable x counts the number of successful trials. So as we look at this example, let's check to make sure that all of that is the case. Here's our example. We've got a basketball player makes 80% of her free throws. In a game, she takes three free throw attempts. So decide whether this is a binomial experiment. Well, let's check everything. Well, the first thing is that there is a fixed number of trials. Well, she's taking three free throws. It doesn't say that she takes free throws forever. So there's a fixed number of trials. So there's the first one, uh, the first condition satisfied. The second thing is that there are two possible outcomes. Well, in this case, there are two possible outcomes. She's either going to make or miss the free throw. So a success is going to be a make and a failure is going to be a miss. So there are two possible outcomes. Now that doesn't mean that the probability of a make is 50% and the probability of a miss is 50%. It doesn't mean this is a 50-50 situation because it tells us that she makes 80% of her free throws. So the probability of a success in this case is 80%. Now that goes along with the third uh, condition that we have to satisfy and that is the probability of a success is the same for each trial and in this case the probability of a success is always 0.8 or 80 percent because she is an 80 percent free throw shooter. The last one is the random variable x counts the number of successful trials. Well, we have to define what x is first. So that's what the second part of this is. It is, if it is, and this is a binomial probability experiment, specify n, p, q, and list the possible values for the random variable. I'm going to start with the random variable x. x is the number of made free throws. So all the possible X's, possible X's, would be zero, she could make none of the three, one, two, or three. She can make none of her three shots, she can make one out of the three, two out of the three, or she can make all three shots. Well, let's define the rest of these variables. n is the total number of trials. Right here, n is the total number of trials, and it tells us she's going to take three free throw attempts. So three is n. p, little p, is the probability of a success. And we just talked about that up here. The probability of a success, in other words, the probability of a make, is 0.8. And then Q is equal to 1 minus lowercase p, or 1 minus the probability of a success. So the probability of a failure, which is Q, Q is the probability of a failure, is 1 minus 0.8, which is 0.2. Okay, 1 minus 0.8 is 0.2. So I've defined everything. Well, that's only part of what we want to do here. Now we actually want to set up our binomial probability distribution. All of the conditions have been satisfied. So now let's set up the binomial probability distribution. Well, in order to do that, let me come up here. My example is being continued here. This is the outline of it. This is the table. So my made free throws are 0, 1, 2, or 3. And I need to find these probabilities. I'm going to use a tree diagram to find the probability that she makes one free throw or zero free throws and then one, two, or three. Sometimes a tree diagram isn't the best way to make things, but I'm going to go ahead and use a tree diagram in this case so uh, I can give you an example of how to use that. So here we go. She takes her first foul shot 
and she is either going to make it or miss it. Now I'm going to use success and failure. So I'm going to use S for success and F for failure. And after her first shot, this is important to realize too, you want to label the probabilities. She has a 0.8% or a 0.8 chance of making the free throw, and 0.2 is the probability of missing the free throw. And then she goes to her second shot. Well, after she takes the first shot, there are going to be two outcomes for the second shot. So here we go. If I label these, it's either going to be a success failure or a success failure. And once again, since each one of the shots are independent of each other, the probability of this success is still 0.8. The probability of this failure is still 0.2. And the same thing for these two possible outcomes. Well, let's continue and go with the third shot. So here, be creative with my branches. Sometimes it gets a little bit crowded with tree diagrams. So there we go. Let me scroll down just a little bit. I've got, this is either going to be success, failure, success, failure, success, failure, and the last one, success, failure. And once again, since each of the trials or each of the free throws is independent of the others, the probability of each success is going to continue to be 0.8, and the probability of each failure is going to continue to be 0.2. So how many different outcomes do I have? Well, there are, I could have a success, success, success. Let me move this down a little bit so I've got just a little bit more room. So I'm going to move all of this down. So I've got a little bit more room. There we go. And what are my outcomes here? Well, I've got a success, 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 which is a make, a make, a make. Or I could make the first two and miss the last one. Or make, miss, make. Or make, miss, miss. Now, once again, I'm using S and F for a success and a failure. The next one is fail and then two makes. And then fail, success, fail. And then two misses, followed by a make. And finally, fail, fail, fail. You, she misses all three. So how do I find the probabilities of each of these? Well, in order to find the probabilities of each one of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight outcomes, I have to multiply the probabilities along each line. So if I want to find the probability of three successes, it's going to be 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 times 0.8. Or if I want to find the probability of two successes followed by a failure, that's going to be 0.8 times 0.8 times 0.2. And I just continue to do that. So as I write these out, I'm going to go ahead and write out the first couple. This is going to be 0.8 times 0.8 times 0.8. And when I do the math, this ends up being 0.512. So this is, this is the probability of each one of the outcomes. Well, on this one, the next one here, I've got 0.8 times 0.8 times 0.2. And when I do the, find the product there, I get 0.128. Well, if you notice, this is the probability of two successes and a failure which is 0.128. Do I have any other outcomes where I have two successes and one failure? Sure I do. There's one right there, two successes and one failure. So this is going to be 0.8 times 0.2 times 0.8. And then I've got another one down here, one failure followed by two successes. That's going to give me the same probability. So this is 0.128. And this one right here is going to be 0.128. Let me draw an arrow there so it's a little bit easier to see where these go. This one is there, and this one is there. So now what about, let me change colors to make it a little bit more obvious. What if I have a success and two failures? So that's 0.8 times 0.2 times 0.2. When I do the math here, I end up getting 0.032. 
And that shows up again. One success and two failures is 0 0.032. But I see right here, there's one success with two failures, and there's one success with two failures. So once again, I have a probability of 0 0.032 and another probability of 0.032 for those specific outcomes. Well, then I've got my last one here, which is a fail, a fail, and a fail. So that's 0.2 times 0.2 times 0.2, which is equal to 0 0.008. Now, one of the nice things about um, probability distributions is that you can kind of check to see if you've done your work right. If I find the sum of each of these probabilities, each of these, as a probability of each of these outcomes, if they equal one, then I most likely have done my work correctly. And when I do the, the math here and find the sum of all of these, they do equal one. So I know that I've done all of my work correctly. Each of these is between zero and one because I can't have negative probabilities. And each of these, when I add the, find the sum of each of these, or all of these, I should say, I get one. So I can, can kind of check my work. Well, this is not the end of it. I have not created a probability distribution yet. I just found the probability of each of these outcomes. Now I have to use these in order to fill in the probability for my probability distribution. Well, let's start off with the probability that she makes zero free throws. Well, I know that. Just look at my tree diagram. That'd be a failure, failure, failure. That's 0 .008. So I can fill in my table up here. The probability that she makes zero free throws is 0 .008. Another easy one is the probability that she makes three free throws. That is 0 .8, 0 .8 times 0 .8 point, which would be 0.512. Now the other two get a little tricky. They're not really that difficult if you can add, and I'm hoping if you're watching this video, I'm pretty sure you can add. Uh, otherwise, you probably don't understand the rest of the stuff. So let's start off with what's the probability that she makes one free throw. I want to look at this one right here. What is the probability that she makes one of her free throws? Well, let's come down here. How many of these outcomes have her making one foul shot. Not this one, not this one. Oh, here's one, 0.032. Here's another one, 0.032, and here's another one. So what do I do with those three probabilities? I take each of these and I add them together. Once I add these three probabilities together, that's going to give me the probability that she makes one free throw because there's three different ways that she could make one free throw she could make miss miss she could miss make miss or miss miss make so if i want to know what is the probability that she makes one free throw that means what's the probability she makes the first one and misses the next two or and the or word and probability tells us to add most of the time What's the probability that she makes the first one, or she makes only the second one, or she makes only the third one? Well, I have to add these three probabilities together. When I add those three probabilities together, I get 0 0.096. 0 0.096. And finally, what's the probability that she makes two free throws? So here's a situation where she makes two. Two, uh, miss, miss, uh, or I'm sorry, make, make, miss. Here's another one, make, miss, make, and then here's the last one, miss, make, make. So again, I have to take these three, 0 0.128, 0 0.128, 0 0.128, and I want to add them. And when I add 0.128 plus 0.128 plus 0.128, I end up getting 0.384. Whew! That was a long one, but that's how you can put together a binomial probability distribution. Now, the only way you're going to get better at these is if you practice. So if you think that you can watch one example and you've got it, then you, you're pretty, if, you've, if you can, then you know this stuff pretty well. But my suggestion is to work through as many binomial probability distributions as you can because it's a tricky thing. 
Um, I don't want to, to fool you, but it, it, the more you practice this, the better you're going to get at any kind of probability. So I hope this helped, and continue watching the videos. Please.